First thing on Quick Hits is my dog, Danny Trejo. Got into the fight, got into a fight in LA on a 4th of, uh, of July parade. Is this what, this is what life coming to over in LA? <laughs> an 80 year old man is getting into a fight and he's supposed to be the person that is like the flag bearer at the parade in LA? Check it out. Fourth of July, but actor Danny Trejo is not celebrating after he got into a fight at a parade in the San Fernando Valley. It went down at the Sunland Tahunga, California parade commemorating America's birthday. We go live to Fox 11's Gina Silva in Tahunga with more. Gina. Christine, Marla, this happened in the morning. It was a fun family event, and Danny Trejo was an honorary guest. Unfortunately, it turned violent, and all of it was captured on cell phone video. A water balloon was thrown at his head in the vintage car. Danny Trejo was participating in the Sunland Tahunga 4th of July parade. But after he was hit by a water balloon, Danny stepped out of his car and chaos ensued. Another water balloon was thrown at him. Punches were thrown. People fell down. Blood everywhere. I think Mario, uh, gentleman, got hit. Um, they cut his eye open. Mario is Danny's best friend. He and Danny were both punched and they fell to the ground. This is right after that where everybody was going wild. Arnie Abramian was there and captured the scene on his cell phone. First he was more like confronting. It wasn't like he went there to hit somebody. But then I think once he got hit, he was throwing punches. And Was he hurt? He didn't seem hurt, I think. It, it looked like somebody laid out Danny. Um... You gotta be careful, you gotta be quicker than that. You gotta be quicker than that. Look like Danny got uh, put to the ground, but... The problem is just that culturally, in all parts of LA, and in a lot of these different liberal cities, it's just bad in general. Like, you don't fight an 80 year old man. Don't, you don't throw a water balloon inside of somebody's vintage car. I don't care if he got knocked down or not. Like, you, you got to be strategic with how you're protecting yourself as a person. However, you, you, like, you don't do that to Danny Trey. Like, that's so, that's so stupid, though. He's, he's an old man. He's like, let me look at how old this guy is. He's 80 years old. The dude was born in 1944. He was born in 1944, he's 5'6", he's 80 years old, and y'all throwing, an 80 year old man, y'all throwing water balloons at an 80 year old man, I don't care how many, how many movies he made and stuff like that, that's so ignorant, this is so dumb, bro. He, he was more, uh, I don't think he was physically hurt, I think he was upset, he was angry, and anger is a mask for he's pain. In he's in better state, he got all of his cognitive functions than Biden. Biden is only a couple years older than him. And Danny is able to get out of the car and go ahead. <laughs> Whatever they feeding Danny versus what they feeding Biden is different. But at the same time, he was, I think, the blood was boiling. So after the fact, maybe he must have some pain, whether it's in his head or neck or back. But uh, at the moment, he didn't show any pain. Arnie says he feels really bad this happened because he knows oh, Danny an is a man. good guy. I apologize to Danny. I know you're a good man. You're a humble man. And thank you for taking your time and coming down to our 4th of July parade. And I'm sorry. Uh, on behalf of our community, we love you. We appreciate you. And we thank you. Now, I understand the police were there and they talked to Danny, but Danny chose not to file any charges. So everything was pretty much let go. And I've reached out to Mario and to Danny. I just I just hoping they're both OK. Uh, I have not heard back from them, but I would just go home, put some ice on my head and just take the night off. <laughs> I wouldn't go to no more parades, no more public events. I'm not holding it down for y'all. I'm not showing up for free. I'm not going nowhere where it ain't no, you know, a whole lot of security. I wouldn't even be bothered with these, these little ignorant fools no more. Uh, in addition to that, three people died in New York when a car plowed into a crowd during a 4th of July celebration. Let's get to it. Now to a developing story, a deadly crash interrupted 4th of July celebrations last night in Manhattan. Three people were killed when a suspected drunk driver crashed into a park. And CBS 2's Christy Kalishian live for us on the Lower East Side with the latest details this morning. Christy. 
Doug, Cindy, hours later, we can still see this truck behind us right where uh, police describe it was right here through this park. Gray Ford F-150. And police here continue their investigation. As you can see, they tell us now a third person has died. They reported earlier that two people were dead on arrival. Now they're saying a third has passed. And That's first crazy. responders arrived here quickly. They say four people were stuck under that truck. And they also say that as many as 200 people were on site at the time and that the truck drove into these partygoers just before nine last night. And so far, police believe that the driver may have been under the influence and report that they did smell alcohol when they got here. They used airbags, floor jacks, and cribbing in order to lift the vehicle off of the victims. During the course of our investigation, we do believe that initially that there were people who were there at the scene who are, uh, grabbed the driver, removed the driver, and made sure the driver didn't leave until first responders uh, made it to the scene. And just a horrific tragedy again. Police say nine people in total were injured. And at this time, we haven't gotten an update on the other victims' conditions. But last night, they said at least one is in critical condition and the rest are expected to be okay. And at this time, we're still waiting to hear on the ages of the other uh, victims here. But what I did hear last night was that a woman and two young children are among the people hospitalized. So haven't heard any further details other than that. And of course, we'll bring you the latest. And also, we're hearing that that driver is in custody and uh, charged are expected to be dropped soon they haven't announced well we know he gonna be going to jail for life but more importantly what about all of the people thank you to Stephen slayer one i'm gonna be reading that super chat shortly what about all of the people's lives that he upended as a result of drunk driving getting into the truck and then next thing you know he plowing over a bunch of people that set a fourth of july celebration and they got to get the first responders and they dead on arrival prayers up for the family prayers up for the family and then last but not least a deadly robbery at a Miami Beach smoke shop, North Miami Beach, not South, North Miami Beach so smoke shop, and it's always the usual suspects. Check it out. And right now, Juwan, police are asking for your help to catch the person who shot and killed an employee inside a business. The deadly violence all caught on camera. Nico Clements is live in North Miami Beach with who police are searching for tonight. Nico. Oh, just tragic, uh, you two. Police say they are searching for the shooter and three other people inside this business. The shooter murdered the employee who works here at the smoke shop just doing his job. And now police are releasing this surveillance video, hoping somebody recognizes the people in the video, hoping they know something to help bring this family justice. A senseless act of gun violence is how police... Be careful of the company that you keep. Be careful of hanging around people that think that they cool. Be careful hanging around people that you know is eventually going to... We was always able to identify the people that was going to crash out later in life. And you gave them a what up, you gave them dap inside of school, or you gave them dap when you seen them, and then you kept it moving. You never went with them, you never hung out with them, you never went to the spot with them. You didn't do any of that. We knew the people that was going to crash out. There's people that I went to school with that's practically doing life in prison. Life in prison. I was just, I was out on the streets yesterday and I was riding my bike and I ran into my dog. Shout out to Dialis, my dog Dialis. Shout out to Dialis. Uh, we used to, I used to go over to his hood over in Highland Park and then he would come over to my hood and all of that stuff and we would hoop together and everything. And I ran into him, and he's into a lot of community service, and I went and spoke at a school that he was working at one time. Um, and I was talking to D, and we were kind of going over some of the people that crashed out, and they never made it. They just genuinely never made it. It just wasn't they. But we knew that they wasn't going to make it. We knew that they wasn't ever going to get out of the hood. And so we was very careful to be cool with people, and we didn't want to, you know, make them seem less than, but at the same time, their futures already seemed like it was pre-planned. Like, y'all, they either was going to get killed, end up in jail, sell drugs, whatever, right? Or, or knock somebody off. And it's always some wannabes that's going to also catch some murder charges as a result of it. The first one to get caught, if he not the shooter, is the first one that's going to get off. They all going to catch charges. The first one to get off is the first one that's going to have the opportunity to tell the snitch. See, my dog, I, I knew Quentin was going to play that game. 
I knew Quentin was going to play that game. I don't even know if D got this number. Yo, Dialis, this is Anton. Anton, what's the deal? Slow motion, my dog. What you doing? Man, uh, doing some shit for my dad, man. Yeah. Was, major. What's up? I'm on a live stream. It was dope running into you yesterday, bro. Oh, man. Wasn't it, though? Yeah, it was dope, bro. My, my guy from all the way back to ninth grade. Ninth grade. <laughs> yeah. Hey, D. Yeah. they 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 say I can't hoop. Well, I'm going to say this. In ninth grade gym class, Anton was short. He was a short dude. Me, him, and this cat named Adam Torres. I, I want to say he was Mexican and Puerto Rican. He was. Rican. He was Mexican. But we used to kill the dudes on the basketball team that was way taller than us. And sit and wonder, like, how did y'all make this team? At cash check, that's all facts, man. And, and that's all facts. And they they say that uh, I grew up privileged and I grew up in the suburbs. And I grew up in eight mile Sconey hood on Green Line. That's between Wyoming and Livernois, between eight mile and Outer Drive. People know him over there, whether they like him or not, they respect him. It, it, it's just a simple thing. Anton did not grow up. He grew up privileged in the sense of where we come from. It's rare you have a mother and a father in the house. But as far as big mansion and all that, no. He grew up in the Sconey, Sconey hood where they known to get down. They known to have good knuckle games and be about their life over there. What about the what about the hood like coming to your hood and stuff? I'm from HP, Six Mile and Woodward. Uh, Anton came to my hood to rap. We used to rap. <laughs> and it was, I mean, what, what people have to understand about Detroit, West Side Detroiters, they would be from the hood and all that, but they bougie. <laughs> Anton has always been a pompous asshole, <laughs> but he always been loyal to his peoples, his homies, his friends. And he always break bread with his friends, but he always been bougie and all of that. But he's from the hood. He had come through the hood. We used to rap. All of that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not what you think, man. <laughs> it ain't what you think. And he's been the same exact way since we was young. That's a fact. Yeah. You on the live stream, man? What show you got me on, man? Millionaire Morning Show, bro. Oh <laughs> uh, man, hey, check out Coach Underscore Creed 313. We out here doing major things. I'm gonna say this too. When I call Anton to come to the trenches on at, at Timbuktu Academy, we service kids from the Parkside Warning County projects, the Greens, them the projects that you see Dave's Loaf in, uh Mac and B Wick, East Warren, all of them boys. When Anton was first transitioning from his job. He came out, talked to the kids about being a YouTuber and really following their dreams. They loved him, man. He talked to like five different classes for free. Uh, and then like three, four months later, he walked away from his corporate jobs and he went all out, man. So I always rock with that time, whether I agree with, I ain't going to agree with no man 100%. But bottom line, that time always showed up when I asked him to holler at my youngest and he always give him solid game. Period. So it is what it is, man. Y'all can hate, but my man's keep it 100, man. <clears throat> All right, D. I love you, bro. All day. Peace. All right, bro. Police describe what happened inside Miami Clouds. I done been the same way my entire life. And that's how I know that these cornballs on the internet, these cornballs on the internet, they just be talking. I done always got money. I done always been a hustler. I always been a dude that said, fuck you and fuck your feelings. 
And I done had the same friends since I was ninth grade, eighth grade, seventh grade. I always been the same dude. And so when I talk, and you know, it's so funny, because real recognize real. Like, you don't, you don't pay attention to these cornballs on the internet. The real recognize real. It's funny because when I run into people in real life, and I'm really out in the streets on a regular basis, when I run into people in real life, I have no problems. I go to every hood, Highland Park, I speak. And see, this is the stuff that they don't tell you on the internet. Like, I actually go to the hood. I speak to the kids. I'm in the high schools. But because I don't highlight that or because I don't record it all the time, people think it's not a thing. So when everybody else is sitting in their they little place, you know what I'm saying, and they sitting on the internet and they typing hard, we actually put money into the community. We actually speak to the kids. We actually participate. Now, I'm not going to change my personality because since I was 13, 12 years old, I always felt like I was the man and I would hoop on your head. I would have rapped on your head. We was always going to go and get all of the hoes and get the girls and we was going to do what we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. But at some point when I became an adult, when I was 20, 21, 22 years old, I decided that I just wanted to do something different. And I didn't want to be in the same place or catch a statistic, um, you know, catch and become a statistic like everybody else. I didn't want to be one of these dudes that was hanging out with a dude that did something wrong. But when my guys call me and say, hey, man, I need you to come and speak to these communities of kids or we need we need a bunch of money. I'm there. I'm there. I'm straight up there. The things that they don't tell you about is the things that we really do in real life. That's the stuff that matters. We can talk about all of this stuff that we talk about online. But what you really do for your community, I done gave out hundreds of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars to my community, to the people that's in the bag chasers, all of that. Anybody can talk online, but very few people actually got stripes where they come from. Very few people can actually go back to where they came from or go back to the hoods or speak to the kids or go to the high schools and actually really pour into your communities. That's why I'm so invested in Detroit. I know he's supposed to be talking about this dude that just got killed or whatever, but that's why I'm so invested in the community because I have a vested interest in seeing this place thrive. There, most people run from their hoods. Most people run from the place that they come from. I couldn't move and make my office down in Atlanta or go to Houston or go to Miami and then be interviewing a bunch of chicks that was on Miami Beach and stuff. I'm not, that's not who I am. To my core, I am in the city. I love my city. I love my community. I fight for my people. I fight for the young guys. And so I'm dedicated to making sure that people continue to run it up. I'm the money guy. That's what my, that's, that's my talent. Some people do community work. Some people are in the trenches as much as they can. I go get the money and I bring it back to the, to the community. I go get the money and I make sure that people got housing. I go get the money and I make sure these young guys can get through college. I go get the money and I make sure that these guys got jobs. I go get the money and then I make sure I mentor a lot of these guys. And so you got to play your role. You got to play your position and everything ain't meant for the Internet. So we ain't got to record when we go and talk to these communities and when we go and talk to these young guys. I got receipts. I don't know what. Um See, it's easy I couldn't wait. I was waiting on Umar Johnson to be able to talk about who we. I don't care nothing about all of that. Listen, all of these people that say that we white or we stand for white people and stuff or on they on the blackity blacks, I guarantee you we didn't did more for the community than they ever have for black people, and we ain't even on that black stuff. I guarantee you we didn't did more for, for these young guys, putting these young guys through school, making sure that they fed and getting the money and that they having opportunities when they ain't have fathers in their home, when they ain't have nothing but, but, but death and desolation and all of this stuff around them. I guarantee you we didn't did more off camera with no accolades than all of these dudes in the community. That's a fact. And it's a reason why ain't nobody in my past could ever say that I ain't nothing other than exactly what I didn't been my entire life. So you, you pick and choose who you want to listen to and who you want to follow. 
We done always got money our entire life. Very rarely. Listen, just because you say you pro-black don't mean you a representation of what we want to follow in the community. Just because you say you pro-black don't mean that you a representation of doing anything for anybody other than yourself. I got the same friends, the same people that speak on me. Ain't nobody, nobody that had never known me could ever say that I'd have never did them dirty. And that's a fact. Let me play the rest of this. Smoke shop in North Miami Beach last month, June 11th. <laughs> Police say Salem al was behind the counter helping four customers when the one in the red hoodie pulled out a gun. Detectives say what started as an armed robbery ended in tragedy. Hey, the, hold on, hold on, hold on. The the I just noticed this. The dude that reached over his hand right there and he got on like gold shorts. The dude that reached over his hand and he got on gold shorts. He was looking to steal the trees right away. He was grabbing the trees while my man had pulled out the gun. All of these dudes is crash dummies. All of them is crash dummies. L look at the dude. Watch Detective say what started as an arm He robbery. grabbed the, the jar, the runts. He was grabbing the runts and he was watching. I don't know if they ever anticipated actually shooting a dude, but it's unfortunate. Ended in tragedy. Police say the person in the red hoodie shot Al Bakri as he was running towards the back. Al Bakri died inside the store. That's a coward. News spread throughout the shopping plaza. Virginia Frell says her son works in a gaming business up, two bro. doors down. She was terrified when she learned the news. That's why I'm in there every day. Every day. Miami Beach police hope by releasing this video, someone will recognize the four people who were inside the business and they can bring justice to Al Bakri and his family. When you can take somebody's life behind them, that's a coward. They intended to kill that dude before they ever even walked in the store. That guy walked in, they, they intended to kill that dude before they ever even walked in the store. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick hits.